Hello, in this lecture we're going to talk about a process cost system and equivalent units using the FIFO method. We will be able to, at the end of this, calculate equivalent units, use equivalent units to allocate material and conversion cost to departments, and create journal entry to transfer cost from one department to the next. All right, so this is the information that we will have here. We're going to be looking at focusing in on department A. We're assuming there are two departments in a process cost system. So remember when we're thinking about a process cost system, we're thinking about something that makes the same type of units, something like taffy or oil or something like that, that every unit is the same and therefore we're going to allocate the cost of the production using a process cost system, allocating the costs to a particular process. In this case, we're going to have the process A and process B, department A and department B, and follow the costs through that flow in this way. All right, so we have the information in terms of units over here. We have the information in terms of costs. This is typical information that would generally be given within a problem of this kind when we're calculating the equivalent units. We have the materials and the conversion that we're talking about. Now, materials is pretty straightforward. It's the materials, <laughs> the raw materials that are going into it. The conversion is going to be the direct, um, the direct labor and overhead, labor and overhead, the things that are going to convert the materials to the end product. So we got to break those things out, think about equivalent units in terms of materials and conversion. Our goal here is to use those equivalent units to help us to allocate these costs to the proper area, the proper department, the proper function, and that's what we will be doing at this time. So note what we have here in dollars. We actually kind of know the dollars here. Our goal here is to take these and then allocate the dollars to the proper department using kind of a ratio analysis. That's what the equivalent units will help us to do. All right, so here we have our information down here. Working through the problem, we're going to start with beginning working process in units. That's going to be given in the problem. So we have 3,000. We would know it in real life because that's where we ended last time. So that's where we're going to start this time. This is units, not dollars. So you want to keep these two separated as we go. In this case, we're talking, of course, units, not dollars. And then we're going to have the units started and completed. So units started and completed here. We want to break this out. This is a bit unusual, a bit new to break this out. The reason we're breaking this out is because under uh, any method, under first in, first out, or any method, if it's started and completed, we'll know how much has been allocated to those units because everything has been allocated to those units. They were both started and completed, as opposed to the units that were in there at the beginning. It's hard, for, we have to think about, well, how much of the conversion has been done and how much hasn't been done. The units that we can specifically say these were started and completed, will uh, then we can allocate all of the information or the costs to them. So we're going to back into this number. That, now, they're, they're going to give us the total units to account for, 24600, minus the units that were in there at the beginning, because if they were in there at the beginning, we did not start them and complete them, so minus 3,000. And then we're going to also subtract out the units that are still in there at the end. Because if units are still in there at the end, then we did not start them and complete them. That's going to be the 2400. Zero, zero. That gives us our 192. So this is the number we're going to back in to. And then we've got the ending working process. We've got the 2400. We would be given that in a problem. We would know that in real life because we would kind of be able to count what's still left. And then we have the total units. So note the total units are counted for as the 3,000 plus the 19,2 plus the 2,004, and that gives us the 24,6. But note what we really had to figure out here was actually this number. So if you put all these in there, you would know this, you would know this, you would know this, backing into this number. That's the kind of unusual calculation we need to put in place so that we can allocate our equivalent units in a first-in, first-out method. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this is the total units we need to account for, they're not completely done, all of them, in terms of the materials materials, and in terms of, of the conversion. So these are the units that are kind of half done or, you know, we're thinking of them as being partially done. The materials for the units for materials, the units for conversion, both those equivalent units will be less than this number. So we're going to take these this number, think about the materials, uh, the, those same units in terms of materials, then think about this same number in terms of conversion. We're going to break it out line by line. So starting with the beginning units here, if the units were already in there as of the beginning, say if we're like making 
some kind of uh, bread or something like that and the dough was already in there that's the first thing that goes in there we're not putting any more dough in there it was already in there we just need to convert it or finish converting it to the ending product so here there's zero in terms of materials because it was that's nothing's going to go in this ma this uh, time period because it was all in there last month and therefore we have zero on the conversion side we're going to have to say okay how done is this dough in this case in terms of going to bread and we last time they're going to have to give us a number we're going to have to make an estimate as of the end of the period last time which was 40 percent complete as of the end of last month therefore this month 100 percent minus 40 percent is 60 percent that we need to complete. So we're going to take these 3,000 units times 60% for conversion in terms of labor and overhead, the stuff to convert the raw materials to the end finished goods, 1,800 units. Okay, so 3,000 is zero for materials and 1,800 for the conversion in equivalent units. Next, we have the started and completed. That's, this one's going to be really easy. That's why we broke it out. If we started it and completed it, then all the stuff in terms of materials like dough and whatnot or you know flour and stuff went into the process this month so 100 percent same equivalent units for materials uh 19,002. same for the conversion if we started it and completed it all the direct labor and overhead went in this month therefore we have the same uh 19,002 in terms of equivalent units for conversion so total units is the same as equivalent units for material and the equivalent units for conversion because we started them and completed them <laughs> this time period. Then we have the ending work in process. Ending work in process. Now, if it's still in the work in process at the end, we're assuming that we started it, we like put the materials in this time, and we didn't finish it. If the materials were in there at the beginning, we of course would have finished that uh, round of stuff and then put more stuff in there. That's the assumption under a FIFO first in first out method. Therefore, if it's still in there at the end, 100% of the materials have been input. Therefore, therefore, we have the 2004 in there for materials. It's the conversion that hasn't yet been done, the direct labor and the overhead. So in terms of direct labor and overhead, they're going to have to give us a number. In real life, we would have to give some kind of estimate and say, okay, how done are they? We're saying 80% done. Therefore, in terms of direct labor and overhead conversion, we're going to take that uh, 2004 times the 80% and come out to the 1920 so now we can add up our totals here. So we're going to say this is the total units to account for, whether they're done or not. These are the equivalent units in terms of materials. And this 24-6 compared to the equivalent units in terms of conversion. Of course, adding up this column here and adding up this column here. All right. So now let's, let's put these numbers to use. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, well, we've got our equivalent units here. We're going to compare that to the costs and come up with a cost per equivalent unit. So we're going to just do a pretty easy calculation. Once we have these numbers, we're just going to take the cost incurred for the period. And notice it's important to take the right number here. We're taking the costs during the month, right? So that's going to be the uh, 248.4, not the total here, because we're not taking into account the beginning information that was accounted for last month. So we've got the 248.4, and we're going to divide that by the equivalent units for materials, which of course is this number that we just calculated. This is a dollar amount. This is a unit amount. And that gives us the dollar amount of $11.50 per equivalent unit in terms of materials. And we're going to do the same thing for conversion. So we had the conversion costs up here, conversion costs coming from there. And that's dollar amount divided by the units gives us the cost per unit in terms of conversion, which is going to be labor and the overhead. So now we got our equivalent units. Now we can take these and apply them out to the process. So we know how much stuff is still in Department A in terms of units and in terms of dollars that are allocated to those units, as well as in Department B or what was transferred out of Department A. All right, so let's do this. We have our information on this side that we've done so far. It's a little small, but it's, it's there. And then we're going to have our calculation. So here's our beginning inventory. That's what was in there at the beginning. That's what was in there at the beginning. Then we're going to add to that. We're going to calculate the cost to complete the beginning inventory. So that's what you're going to do is we're going to go through this one kind of line by line and convert our equivalent units line by line to dollar amounts using our equivalent unit costs here. So We've got the beginning costs. We're going to say the direct materials was zero. So that's this number here. Direct materials is zero. 
and times, of course, the 1150 here gives us, of course, zero. And then we're going to take the uh, conversion in terms of this beginning line was this uh, 1008. 1008 times the conversion cost per unit, the 4725, gives us the uh, 8550. And if we then add those up, we got the total cost completed in the beginning uh, inventory. And then we're going to add up these two, the outer column, the uh, beginning inventory plus the total cost of completed. And that gives us the total cost of units in the beginning inventory. So everything that was that was in there prior prior month costs and what's in there at this point in time is these two numbers there. Then we're going to go to the next line item. We're basically going down. Okay, now we're on the stuff that was started and completed. And we're going to say, okay, well, there's 19.2 in terms of units times our cost per unit, the 1150. That gives us the uh, 22800. Same thing for conversion. So conversion, we're taking this number, 19.2 times the cost per unit, 47.25, means we have a total cost of the 907200 and if we add those up we got the total cost of units started and completed 1,128,000 and then if we add up uh, this number and this number we're going to get the total cost of units transferred out so we, we, we added this and this to get to this number then we're adding this and this to get to this number this is what's been transferred out because remember the beginning inventory under the FIFO method, if, if it was still in there at the beginning, we finished it and transferred out. That's the assumption. And if it was started and completed, we finished it and transferred it out. So in terms of the dollar amount now, we've applied the dollar amount to the units. This is the dollar amount of the journal entry that's going to be there that's going to take it out of the work in process for A and transfer it to the next process, the work in process for B, which if, it, if we were making bread or something, we'll probably be like the packaging department from, you know, the, the production of the bread department. All right, but we're not quite done yet because we haven't done the ending work and process. That's the stuff that's still left in uh, the process, the stuff that's still not quite done in A. And here we have the 2004. So here's the 2004 times the uh, uh, cost per unit, the 1150, gives us the 27.6. six. And we have the conversion, the conversion 1920 times the 4725 cost per unit of conversion gives us the 90,720. And that adds up to a total cost of ending work and process, 118,320. And then if we add up these outer columns here, plus the 118,320, that gives us the 1,452,240. The reason we want to calculate that is because that should tie out to our total cost number here that we we started with so we started with our total cost number remember what our goal was was to take this allocation and allocate it between the departments departments a which is kind of the making of the bread in this case and department b which is going to be the uh processing or the stuff that's going to transfer to department b or like packaging or something like that so remember this will be the actual journal entry then to take it to take the stuff out and that will leave us with ending uh, inventory here. Let's see what that looks like in terms of a journal entry. So here's our same information. So then we're going to take a look at, at this journal entry. We've got the work in process for A. We've got the work in process for B. We have the 1, 000, uh, 1, 000, 452, 240 in Department A. The journal entry here will be the credit uh, to Department A of the 1,333,2920. That member came from our worksheet here. So there it is there. We're going to uh, take that out of Department A. That's the stuff that we have then completed. And it's going to transfer to Department B. So it's going to go into Department B. And now Department B is going up by that amount. So that would be the flow of the transaction, the journal entry to take it out, and the allocation method. Here it is if we pull in all the other accounts. Of course, what we are basically doing is taking it out of one asset account, being the inventory account, moving it to the next asset account, the next inventory account, it will then go to the finished goods, and then uh, we will have the uh, cost of goods sold finally once it is then sold at the end of the day. That's when we're going to actually expense all these costs that we are talking about at this time.